Um, first, first main point I want to make is that the validation quality system does not equal the validation department. The validation quality system does not equal the validation department. How many of you have a validation department in the quality organization? Several, okay. How many of you have a validation department in the engineering department? Yep, okay. And in the manufacturing technical support department? Okay. So the validation quality system, right, is that whole system that takes a piece of equipment or a process from the design phase through development, through trial runs, through you know, process validation, through continued process performance, through decommissioning. The validation quality system. Although at the same time, I have to say, be careful, the validation quality system cannot manage everything that has to be managed to stay in a validated state. A quality system needs to focus on one point of topic, which is the validation quality system. It interlocks with the change control quality system, the documentation quality system, the training quality system. Right? The, at least at Sanofi, we define 26 different quality systems. Now that doesn't mean we have to have 26 different ones. I think um, we have like 12. But there's all different quality systems that feed into the validation quality system that link with them. Okay? The validation quality system is not equal to the validation organization. The quality systems must build upon one another, right, and interlock with each other. If you want to think about the quality systems as an interlocking puzzle piece. And one doesn't exist well without the other. Does that make sense to everybody? Are there any questions on what a quality system is? I know there's a lot of confusion sometimes when I do presentations to newbies about what exactly is a quality system. What do we mean by quality system, right? We mean, we mean all the procedures, all the training, all the everything that goes into place to make this a robust process that's going to keep yourself and your, your equipment and your processes under some state of control, some state of compliance. So here's an example, just real quickly, of, the, of a quality system regulation. This is design controls. So for design controls, you've got your user needs, right? This is your URS, basically your user requirement specification. It still feeds into your design input. It feeds into the design process, design output, design verification, and back until you get a good passing design verification. Okay? Goes to your management, or so it comes down to the medical device. So over here you have design validation, right? So these and these are connected with the design validation, are connected with the management system, and then in the end you have your medical device. This is just kind of an example of how quality systems have to interlock with each other. And, and the validation quality system itself must be built internally. So you've got stage one, two, and three for your validation quality system. Now sometimes it becomes confusing when people try to apply stage one, two, and three to let's say cleaning validation, right? Because the process validation guidance, and I've heard this several times from different FDA auditors, was meant for process validation. And, and us people that are cleaning gurus say, yes, yes, but cleaning's a process. But I've heard the FDA several times say, no, no, you're reading into it. We never for this process validation to apply to cleaning. I've heard that straight from the monkey's mouth, if you will, them saying, we did not intend for the process validation guidance to apply to every validation that's out there, right? Now, the of the world and us cleaning SMEs of the world try very hard to interpret how, what's the impact of my cleaning validation, right? Because cleaning is a process, and, but, but really, <laughs> stage one, God bless you, stage one, is where I would do, if I'm looking from the process validation stages, this is where cleaning validation happens, really, right, stage one. So I've got uh, design of experiments, QBD, I've got equipment qualification going on here, I've got cleaning validation, I've got environmental qualification, I've got all that validation that's the base of what I'm going to do when I make my process performance qualification lots, my PPQ lots in stage two. All this base background, and notice this is a Lego block, right? So it goes back behind everything. It's a base that supports the, my PPQ lots, which then gets me to the continued verification phase, right? And it all feeds back into itself. It all builds on top of itself. 
So the stages of the validation lifecycle approach, let's discuss briefly the stages of the quality system. Stage one, developing the process, qualifying the equipment, performing associated PQs like IQ, OQ, PQ. Right, I, I call that all, and this is how we've interpreted it at Genzyme. That's all stage one. Okay? And again, people, get, people kind of muddle it together when they try to say that PQ is actually stage two. I call PQ stage one. PPQ, process performance qualification, where I'm doing PV, what we used to call PV, that's stage two. When I'm actually ready to manufacture consistency lots, that's what I would call stage two. And stage three, of course, is continued process verification, process monitoring, cleaning monitoring, revalidation, those things that I, that I keep doing to keep myself in some state of control.